Hello, and welcome back to our video lecture series in global history. Today we begin a new era in global history, the rise of trans-regional trade networks. Trade between people throughout Afro-Eurasia had been going on for centuries. However, it really starts to pick up around the 4th century. Perhaps the oldest trade route was the Silk Road. The Silk Road was not an actual road, but a series of overland trade routes which connected East Asia with the Mediterranean world in Europe. Merchants rarely made the whole journey though. Merchants from China would travel west to a certain point and exchange goods with merchants who were traveling east from the Mediterranean region. Because travel was mainly done on horseback, merchants could only carry a limited amount of goods. This trade network was named the Silk Road because silk from China was the most valuable commodity and was very much in demand in Rome. As early as the 3rd century BCE, knowledge of the monsoon winds allowed sailors to navigate the Indian Ocean, linking together merchants from India, Southeast Asia, Africa, and Arabia. Sailors from China sailed through Southeast Asia, connecting China to this vast maritime trade network. Maritime, or ocean trade, was much more lucrative than overland trade because ships could carry a larger quantity of goods. For many years, the Sahara Desert in North Africa was a barrier to trade, isolating areas south of the desert. However, with the introduction of the camel around the 4th century, Trans-Saharan trade linked Sub-Saharan Africa with the already bustling Mediterranean trade. One of the most valuable trade items was salt mined in the Sahara. By the 5th century, these trade networks connected people and cultures from all over the Afro-Eurasian world, and the resulting exchanges had enormously important effects. One economic result was the exchange of vast numbers of goods. Commonly traded goods included silk and porcelain from China, salt and gold from Africa, wine and olives from the Mediterranean, and spices from India and Southeast Asia. Another commodity that was traded, unfortunately, were slaves. Slaves from East Africa and Asia were bought and sold throughout the Indian Ocean network. Some estimates include up to 25 million people. Improved maritime technology during this period contributed to the growth of trade and was another item that was exchanged between civilizations. Navigation instruments like the compass, which could tell sailors which direction they were heading, and the astrolab, which allowed sailors to know their location, made ocean travel safer, as did improved ship construction. Chinese shipbuilders designed new ships called junks, which were larger and could carry more goods. Indian or Arab shipwrights designed a new ship called the Dao, which could sail against the monsoon winds of the Indian Ocean. Another thing that was exchanged as a result of increased contact between civilizations was culture. This is most evident in the spread of religious ideas. Buddhism, which began in India, soon spread throughout all of Asia. Muslim traders from Arabia spread the Islamic religion into Africa, Asia, and Europe. This process of spreading cultural ideas is known as cultural diffusion. These are only some of the results of the increased networks of exchange that flourished during this time period. We will discuss some of them in more detail in future lectures. Until then, have a great day.